Good evening, everyone. A very warm welcome to all of you for Embassy Dates Second Quarter FY2025 Earnings Conference Call. Currently, all participants are in a listen-only mode. Our speakers will address your questions during the question and answer session at the end. As a reminder, this conference call is being recorded. I would now like to hand the conference over to Ms. Sakshi Garg, Head of Investor Relations for MBC Day. Thank you, and over to you, ma'am. Thank you. Welcome to the second quarter of FI 2025 earnings call for MBC Reit. Uh, MBC Reit released its financial results for the quarter and half year ended September 30, 2024, a short while back. As is our standard practice, we have placed our financial statements, earnings presentation discussing our performance, and a supplementary financial and operating data book in the investor section of our website at www.mbcofficeparks.com. As always, we would like to inform you that management may make certain comments on this call that one could be in forward-looking states. Please be advised that the REIT's actual results may differ from these statements. Embassy REIT does not guarantee these statements or results and is not obliged to take them in advance. Specifically, any financial guidance <coughs> sorry, and performer information that we provide on this call are management estimates based on certain assumptions and have not been subjected to any audit review or examination procedures. So caution not to place undue reliance on such information, and there can be no assurance that we will be able to achieve the same. Joining me today are Arvind Maya, our CEO, Amit Shetty, our COO, and Abhishek Agarwal, our CFO. We'll start off with brief remarks on the business and financial performance, and then open the floor to questions. Over to you, Arvind. Thank you, Sakshi. <clears throat> Good evening, and thank you all for joining us today. Q2 was yet another remarkable quarter for us. Before we get into the details, let me start with certain key highlights for the quarter and half year. We leased a total of 2.1 million square feet for Q2, recording our highest ever H1 leasing performance of 4 million square feet. Signed 1.3 million square feet of new leases, 0.4 million square feet of renewals at an impressive 71% spread. Grew occupancy to 87% by area and 90% by value, up 4% year over year on a higher base of 38.3 million square feet. Delivered 0.6 million square feet office tower in Bangalore, which is 100% pre-leased to ANC. Raised the leasing guidance for the full year from 5.6 million square feet to 6.5 million square feet. Increased the hotel occupancy to 67%, up 14% year over year, with the three Hiltons at around 70% occupancy. And lastly, grew our NOI by 12% year over year and a DPU by 5%, keeping us on track with the annual guidance. Moving to more details on our Q2 leasing performance. We leased a total of 2.1 million square feet across 22 deals and expanded our occupier base to 260 blue chip clients. This included 1.3 million square feet of new leases, 0.4 million square feet of renewals, and 0.4 million square feet of pre-commitments. The renewal included early renewal of leases totaling 0.2 million square feet in Embassy Manita, where over 80% renewal spreads were locked in around a year ahead of actual lease expiry. The pre-commitments included 0.2 million square feet signed by a leading cybersecurity U.S. company for the upcoming Block 8 in Embassy Tech Village, and 0.2 million square feet of expansion option exercised by an Australian bank in the D1-D2 redevelopment project in Embassy Manita. The latter also signed an additional expansion option of 0.3 million square feet, which needs to be exercised by June 2025. And with this, the whole 1.4 million square feet tower is pre-leased to them, including their expansion options, making this our largest built-to-suit project till date. This quarter, around 50% of our leasing demand was driven by global captive centers, or GCCs, primarily from BFSI and technology sectors and over 30% of the space was leased to multiple flex operators. Bangalore continued to lead the demand and contributed to over 75% of our quarterly leasing. As indicated by us last quarter, our NOIDA demand has started to pick up. We signed over 300,000 300, square feet of leases in MC Oxygen, bringing its occupancy up, 70, up to 70%, over 8% increase within a quarter. We noted 0.6 million square feet of tenant exits in Q2, mostly from IT service occupiers, who now contribute to less than 10% of our rental portfolio. Also, of the total 1.5 million square feet exits noted in the first half, we have already backfilled over 40% area, 
a 61% higher ranks and remaining vacant area offers a 19% mark to mark potential during q2 we also received 0.3 million square feet of additional exit notice from one of our it services tenants in pune this was part of the potential risk that we had highlighted back in q4 of fi24 and a portion of which had materialized in q1 with 0.4 million square feet of exit notice from the same tenant despite these additional exits we anticipate our year end portfolio occupancy to close at 88% by area or 92% by value on a total enhanced completed portfolio of 40.3 million square feet by march 25 a little more insights into our city wise occupancy our mumbai portfolio is now at 99% occupancy chennai at 95 and bangalore at 91% noida and pune are at 78 and 70% respectively seven of our 14 properties are now recording stabilized occupancy levels of over 95% If we break down our total 5.2 million square feet vacant area, 2.2 million square feet is in Bangalore, for which we have a strong GCC pipeline and expect to reach stabilized occupancy levels of mid 90s in this city in the next year or so. Around 1 million square feet vacancy is in Noida, which is at our embassy oxygen asset. This asset has seen a good pickup in demand, and we are confident of increasing its occupancy to the mid 80s in another year's time. finally on pune where in 1.9 million square feet of our current vacancy resides a majority of this vacant space is in embassy quadron the current leasing traction at hinjewadi and especially around embassy quadron continues to be slow and we expect that it will take us some time for leasing demand to return in this micro market having said that we want to highlight that the pro forma vacant area at embassy quadron by the end of the year represents only 1.4% of our total portfolio by value Also, just in the last 12 months, we have successfully demarcated and denotified around 5.3 million square feet area, and we have already leased over 80% of the same. Another 1.4 million square feet is in the process of being converted either to non-SEV or non-processing area. On our development portfolio, <clears throat> our current development portfolio pipeline now totals 8 million square feet, comprising nine projects across Bangalore and Chennai. Till FI 26. Five towers spanning 5.2 million square feet are scheduled for delivery, and we have already pre-leased 71% of this area, including expansion options. Our ongoing 8 million square feet development is at highly attractive yield on cost of around 19%, and is a key growth lever for the REITs NOI and DPU in the coming years. As we look ahead a bit on the macro front, Pan India leasing activity maintained a very strong momentum with 50 million square feet already leased. out in the first 9 months of the year with this record leasing performance calendar year 24 absorption is on track to reach all time record highs this outperformance continues to be driven by faster closure of large deals as well as continued strong demand from gccs and flex operators large scale office parks with world class amenities excellent connectivity and vibrant ecosystems are becoming the preferred choice for these gccs for attracting top tier talent such total business ecosystem asset of ours like mc manita tech village and golf links stand out in this current environment we are committed to creating maintaining and acquiring similar infra type office parks to maintain a portfolio and tenant quality finally i am delighted to announce a few leadership changes amit shetty our current head of leasing has been elevated to the reeds chief operating officer and rishad pandol our co head of commercial leasing has been promoted to head of all india leasing i want to congratulate both amit and rishad and wish them continued success in their enhanced roles i will now hand it over to abhishek to present the financial updates thank you arvin and good evening everyone let me take you through the financial highlights for q2 our our revenue from operations and net operating income both grew by 12% year on year to rupees 997 crores and rupees 805 crores respectively the increase was mainly driven by new lease up at high releasing spreads contracted rent escalations new buildings delivered and acquired during the period and a continued ramp up in our hotel business this was partially offset by the impact of exits in our office portfolio and a decline in our solar revenue due to reduction in government tariffs 
as well as a seasonal reduction in solar unit generation. We declared distributions of rupees 553 crores or rupees 5.83 per unit for the quarter, representing a 5% uptake year on year. This was driven by an increase in our NOI, which was partially offset by an increase in our interest costs. We have raised rupees 2,000 crores of coupon bearing debt at an average rate of around 7.95% to repay the non-convertible debentures, which were due for maturity last week. The fund has included issuance of rupees 900 crores of NCDs, which saw 3x subscription, rupees 850 crores of term loans from leading banks, and rupees 250 crores of commercial paper. As of September 24. Our net debt book stood at over Rs. 18,000 crores, implying a 31% leverage ratio at 7.82% in-place cost. Post the above refinance, the in-place cost has increased marginally to 7.99% with 51% of the debt book now at floating rates. All our recent debt raises and refinancings have been aimed at optimally managing our interest costs and locking in rates for shorter durations, positioning us well to take advantage of future rate cuts. Next on our independent valuation. As of September 24, our gross asset value increased by 12% year on year to Rs. 59104 crores and our net asset value by 4% to Rs. 415.84 per unit. The increase was mainly driven by new deliveries, Chennai acquisition, and our ongoing development capex. Lastly, an update on our FY25 guidance. Based on our YTD performance, I am pleased to reconfirm the financial guidance that we had provided at the start of FY25. We continue to expect our NOI to be in the range of Rs. 3215 to Rs. 3345 crores and our distributions to be in the range of Rs. 22.4 to rupees 23.1 per unit. At midpoint, this guidance implies a 10% growth in NOI and a 7% growth in DPU on a YOY basis. This guidance is based on certain key assumptions for the year, which includes a revised total lease up of 6.5 million square feet, including 4 million square feet of new leasing, 1 million square feet of renewals, and 1.5 million square feet of pre commitments. Year-end portfolio occupancy of 88% by area and 92% by value. And an increase in the total interest expense for the year by 18 to 20% year on year. We have consistently delivered our annual guidance every single year and we remain focused on delivering this year's growth numbers to our 1 lakh plus investors. With this, let's move to Q&A please. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and 2. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Puneet Gulati from HSBC. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, thank you so much and, and congratulations on an uptick in DP once again. My first question is with respect to the divergence between NOI growth and, and DPU growth, especially for two assets, Manneta and Tech Village, where Manneta, at least on NDCF side, seems to have contracted 17% despite the increase on the NOI side while Embassy Tech Village, on the other hand, has expanded uh, NDCF on a, on a lower growth or NOI. If you can help us explain some of the discrepancies here. Uh, but the way I would uh, answer this is not to look at the DPU uh, asset by asset, because what happens is the loans that we have taken, not necessarily the loan we have taken in one particular entity is utilized for the same particular entity. So it is all mixed up between the SPVs and the REITs. Having said that, uh, for this quarter, 
Manita's DPU is lower because we have paid the property tax for the full year of Manita in this particular quarter. Okay. And point also that kind of explains the divergence between 12 and 5, yeah. which is this quarter there's been additional outflows of property tax, uh, unlike last year where we had split it between Q1, Q3. We took the benefit of certain rebates and paid it between Q1, Q2. So uh, that's the reason why you see the divergence. But overall basis, if I could just straight take the question and answer it in terms of guidance, we believe in terms of NOI, we'll be probably be at the lower end of the NOI range. But in terms of DPU, we believe we'll be at the higher end of the range come FI25 end. Understood. And, and will it be fair to say that uh, large part of property tax pain is, uh, is, is, is done in Q2 and Q3, Q4 should see less of the impact? Yeah, so uh, most of the property tax we have already paid between Q1 and Q2. Okay, and secondly, if you can also explain, uh, you know, what's driving the dividend growth on the golf link side, and then how should one think about it getting into next two quarters? So, Puneet, actually, as we have said in the last uh, quarter call also, for, for GLSP, what yeah. you should do is not look at quarter on quarter because the distribution there depends on the cash availability that they have. The way we can look at is, uh, as I said, that the run rate of Q1 is a run rate we should see for the full year. So it would land somewhere around 260 crore types in the zip code of 260 crore. Understood. And lastly, if you can talk about what is the additional 1.4 million square feet that you've put in for conversion, where exactly is that area and what are these assets? It's, uh, across uh, a few assets, Puneet, but this 1.4, again, I can split it as 0.7 million we're looking at denotifying lands itself. Uh, one is in Pune and one is in Embassy Tech Village. And the balance 0.7 million square feet is floor by floor demarcation. Again, largely between Manita, Tech Village and Oxygen. Understood. That's very helpful. Thank you so much and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Mohit Agrival from IISL Securities. Please go ahead. Due to no response from the current participant, we will move on to the next participant. The next question is from the line of Murtuza from Kotak Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hi, Arvind. Uh, just a question from my side. You know, if I look at the um, the uh, mark to market spread over the last few quarters, it has been shrinking, and that's because your in place rentals are obviously being realized at a higher rate, uh, but the market rentals haven't moved, right? Uh, so that's one larger observation. And more specifically, if I were to look at it from a geography perspective, most of your mark to market is concentrated in bank law. And when I look at the final set of data points, Pune and Maida are actually running a negative mark to market. So two parts to it, given that in general, real estate prices have generally been on the app. And like you pointed out, most of your geographies are seeing fairly healthy occupancies, barring let's say Pune and Noida. Shouldn't we see an uptick in market rentals at some point in time as well? That's one part. And the second is, uh, how should one think of negative mark to market? You know, uh, you know, whenever those contracts do come up for leasing, how should one think? Or you would like to believe that, you know, even those cities will play a catch up on market rentals, and so the mark to market is just, um, just a, a number which may not actually be realized. Yeah. Uh, let me answer this little macro, little micro, and I'll also request Amit to add, Amit Chetty to add a little on the market flavor. Big picture, Muthuza, the market rent, what you see, and the overall MTM computations which are given are purely based on the market rent given by our uh, valuers, which is <coughs> Pushman over here, right? So, I mean, if you look at big picture Bangalore, they've given a market rent of 97 for both Manita and Tech Village. All I would want to say is all are leasing uh, in both these assets range from 100 to 110, and some of them a little higher than that also over the last six months number one, right? So while the valuers give a market rent, they try to give it for that specific micro market and not necessary for our asset. So some of these NPMs which are mentioned here, I would say are understated, right? And I would say it's a similar story for our Mumbai assets where our leasing is happening much above market rates. And I would say that's a similar story even for our Noida assets where, you know, the rent which we are achieving 
are way higher than the number which is mentioned, which is 48. Potentially only in Pune, and also in Pune, I would say, Tech zone and cubics, largely, we are a little above the market rate was mentioned. Quadron is something where we've seen no leasing traction and hence can't comment much. But in terms of overall market trends, probably I can request Amit also to chip in what he's seen overall in the market. Thanks, Arvind. Uh, just to add to Arvind, uh, uh, you know, the overall leasing absorption has been very healthy in the country. I think YTD has been about 54 million square feet of leasing the supply in the country is also contracting compared to, uh, I think there's a 17% drop uh, compared to the last year. So this again reinforces the fact that the rental values are just going to go north uh, across market and across cities. I think, uh, you know, the top three cities again, like last year, continues to be Bangalore followed by Hyderabad and then Delhi NCR. And Chennai is a, is a close fourth uh, in terms of uh, overall absorptions. So I think from a Bangalore perspective, if you see just the absorption on the GCC side, about 65% of the GCC volume in the country is in Bangalore itself, and, and that's where our biggest portfolio sits. So I think uh, that kind of sums up the, the, uh, you know, the dynamics in the market. Sure. Uh, if I could uh, just put in one more question, how do you think of some of these exits which we're still seeing? If if the market dynamics are so tight, you know, how how should one read into the broader sort of exits as opposed to getting into specific to any city or micro market? Actually, uh, you know, uh, we can speak with a little more conviction, Ms. Muktaza, because beginning of the year we had expected a total exit of around 1.5 million. Now that 1.5 has gone up to around 2.5. Having said that, at the beginning of the year, only we had said that this 1.5 does not include a potential risk tenant in Quadron, which was almost 630,000 square feet, right? So if you see the increase from 1.5 to 2.5, the 1 million increase, of the 1 million, 0.64 is coming just from this tenant, which we had highlighted as high risk. And if I were to remove this out, it is just one additional tenant in Bangalore Tech Village, which has given up another 200,000 square feet. Besides, there, besides this, there are just another two or three small exits. So you can see the exit slowly rationalizing and taken together with the new lease up, you're seeing the occupancy going up. Sure. Now, no, we appreciate the vacant, overall vacant area coming down and occupancy is going up. So that's broadly good, but Nick picking on some of the numbers. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Parivez Akhtar from Navama Group. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, good evening, and thanks for taking my question and conversation for the great set of numbers. Uh, so my first question is regarding uh, Splendid Tech Zone. Uh, over the next seven quarters, uh, roughly about 1.6 million square feet uh, space will uh, become available there. Uh, so how do we see the leasing pipeline in that city? Because this is a sizable amount for uh, Chennai. So just wanted to get your thoughts there. Always, uh, probably you can just finish off all questions so then I can redirect the teams to answer specifically. Sure. And uh, we don't have anything else. Sure. Uh, the second question is, I mean, you did mention that IT services now contribute to less than 10% of your portfolio. Uh, but at a sectoral level, when do you see pain ending? Uh, in that space, uh, and also now that we have uh, seen occupancies improving in Noida, uh, to which sectors do these incremental leasing uh, happening to? Thanks. So, why don't I request Amit to take the first question on Chennai? Uh, thanks, Evan. Uh, Chennai, you know, we have a very strong pipeline that we've built over the last uh, quarter, quarter plus. Uh, you know, there are large demands, especially from the GCC sector again in Chennai, given the talent that is available in, in Chennai. So we don't see, uh, we see this as a great opportunity, uh, given that, you know, currently we're at 95% occupancy and just to further consolidate and strengthen our position in that market. And uh, in terms of IT services, <clears throat> honestly, two perspectives on this, Pervez. one is it's already drop below 10% and uh, one tenant will leave in the next uh, couple of quarters. With that, it will drop to probably 1% more. And then 
I see it largely stabilizing there for our portfolio, but overall, uh, I mean, just seeing from the results and seeing from some of the conversations, two issues which have been there in the past. One was work from home, which I think is a done deal. They've all called people back to office. And there are actually a few RFPs in the market where IT services need more space. Having said that, one thing to call out for clearly is that IT services will continue to be a little more conscious on the rent they pay. And some of the parks which we own, especially in Bangalore, might not necessarily be a solution which they would want to take considering the rents which have moved up to over there. And NOIDA, uh, overall demand traction, what we are seeing, honestly, is coming from a lot of GCC players only across, I would say, tech, BFSI. Yeah, these are the two broad, and healthcare. These are the three broad sectors where there are GCC players coming, taking up more space. And also the demand in NOIDA is a factor of lack of availability of grade A total business ecosystem type park, which is what oxygen is. Uh, the buildings over there are more, we would say, strata owned or grade B supply. So as GCCs enter this particular market slash micro market, we our parks become uh, at least the first port of call for them. Thanks and all the rest of you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ritesh Sheikh from Access Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, uh, thanks for being my question. Uh, the first one is on, uh, you know, uh, your, uh, uh, I would say, you know, living traction that you see in Pune and Noida. Uh, you know, what's the outlook there? Like you, 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 you guided for mid 90s occupancy uh, in in bangalore by next year uh, you know how do you see uh, trajectory for pune and noida going ahead considering that you know now we are finally now seeing uh, some traction on on leaving there so that's one second uh, probably you know our noi growth this year should be around 10% as per your guidance uh, considering you know the positive uh, commentary on leasing that you have given plus uh, the new developments that are uh, coming in, in in this year. Uh, directionally, whether FY26 should see a better growth run rate versus 10% this year. Uh, and third, on interest cost, uh, uh, which is expected to increase by 18 20% this year. Uh, next year, uh, you know, it should be in line with uh, where the NOI growth should be or or there is some bit of impact still left uh, on that interest cost. Those are my questions. Thank you. Sure, Prakash. I think on the first one, on uh, <clears throat> leasing traction, Noida I did mention a bit, but uh, giving a little more color, Galaxy is already at 99%, so we have nothing to lease. Oxygen, we are currently at 70%, and I did say that we expect that 70% to go above mid, say, uh, call it mid-80s in the next 6 to 12 months. That's where we see uh, overall Noida heading, so positive. In terms of Pune, honestly, with the exits coming up in Quadron, Directionally, Pune occupancy will drop in the next six months. Uh, honestly, in the next six months, we might see some very marginal leaving in a couple of other assets, which is TechZone uh, as well as Cubix. TechZone is already at 81%, which is fine, and Cubix is close to 70 There might be a little bit of marginal leaving here, but uh, nothing beyond that. So overall, four cities will be very strong of the five. It's only Pune, which will lag a bit. And we, I did call out that overall from a value perspective, this is a small component. On your other two questions, Pratesh, honestly, uh, both overall direction and interest cost, while I might be itching to answer this, I will just refrain and hold on, you know, till we give better guidance probably end of the year. Sure, sure. Uh, that's not a problem. Okay, thank you. Uh, that's it from my side. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Mohit Agrawal from IIFL Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, sorry, my line got dropped, so thanks for giving me the opportunity again. Uh, so uh, my first question is uh, on the occupancy level. I think you mentioned that you are still looking at 88% uh, debt occupancy levels by end of FI25. Uh, I just want to understand the math a little better, considering that while we have increased the leasing guidance, uh, there's also been an increase in the exits, right? So. So, and the, lease, the, the guidance increase also has a large portion of uh, pre-commitments, like forward uh, leasing. So, if you could just help me understand the math that 
Uh, how do you still see an 88% kind of occupancy level on area by the end of FY25? Well, do you want to finish off your question? Yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, my, uh, my second question is if you could, could elaborate a bit on the uh, the notes in the financials about the restructuring of the SPVs, which holds the quad one assets and also the hospitality assets. So what's the thought there? Uh, they have the media articles around both these businesses, uh, you know, so so some color on, you know, what you plan to do. Uh, that's the second question. If I may just squeeze in a third one, is your view on, uh, you know, you've talked about flex operators. They've taken a large space this quarter, uh, you know, now almost 7% of your portfolio. This used to be about 2% during COVID. Um, just wondering, you know, how do you think, you know, they do in terms of sustainability also, uh, if there's some sort of an overlap in terms of tenants and uh, all of that. So, so just your thoughts on basically Flex being a large part, meaningful part of your portfolio now. Sure. Uh, I think starting with the occupancy, one of the key missing uh, links could be more uh, the fact that of the 1.9 million square feet, which is getting delivered in the next six months, 1.3 million is already pre-leased. Right? So we don't give that as additional lease up for the next six months. It's only what lease up we consider in the balance 500,000 what is left in uh, parcel 8 of ETV, which gets included. So what that means is, call it <clears throat> 1.9 million gets added to supply, and potentially something very close to 1.9 could get added to on the numerator as well. I think that could be the missing link when you do the walk from 87 to 88 after factoring in the exits. But we can... You know, if you're still not able to arrive at, uh, Sachi can take this offline and help you on this map. So uh, sure. that's one. Yeah. Uh, second, why don't I cover flex first and then I'll go into the question on restructuring. Yeah. Big yeah. picture, it's a well thought through strategy, uh, Mohit. And the reason I say that is, if you see majority of this flex lease up has happened in our monet asset, number one. Number two, the reason why we did this is a lot of these are also, in a way, kind of back-to-back. -back. Uh, literally, it's different GCCs looking for solutions, and some of these GCCs are very clear that they want an end-to-end managed office, and they would like to go with some of these flex operators to take up space. So because of that, and also the last part is some of these tenants have clearly called out to these operators that we would want to be in and around Manita. So what that means is that's a very big positive for us. There's been a huge demand from literally all flex operators asking for space in Manita. So having said all of this, I think strategically we'll be selective on how much we give space to, to flex operators overall. Uh, today we are around 7% of our portfolio. Across India, flex is around 10% of overall available office. But when you look at it on a quarter on quarter or even on a year on year basis, Flex leasing is ranging from 15 to 17%. So they're growing much faster than others. But all I would say is, big picture, we will be flex taken together as an overall portfolio. We would like to be below the industry average. I think that's the big picture strategy we have on flex. Uh, and the last one on restructuring. Couple of uh, things on this. You know, Firstly, we are long-term owners of assets, and our strategy has not changed on that, number one. Number two, having said that, I think there is stress in our embassy quadron asset, and we can't shy away from that fact. As responsible asset managers, all we are doing is evaluating what is best for this asset when we look at it more long term. And we are still in a very evaluation phase. We have not made up any mind. But the structure today the way it is, is in this entity called Quadron Business Park, there are three assets. There is the Quadron Business Park of Pune, the Embassy One asset, as well as Four Seasons assets. All three are part of the single entity. So what we thought was, at least structurally, let's be ready. You know, eventually we don't know where this will head. We could, for all you know, continue to hold these assets. But structurally, structurally if there's an opportunity where we get good value for some of these assets and we would like to divest and recycle capital. We don't want to take another nine months to start a process then. That's the reason why we thought of this restructuring. And along with this, you know, considering the stamp duty and other implications which are then restructuring, it makes sense 
to combine a couple of restructuring then the costs of restructuring reduce with this in mind we thought why don't we keep the hotel assets of embassy manyata also separate then effectively we're keeping hotels in a different structure so it's just a enabling structure of keeping hotels separate nothing beyond that uh so what what eventually you plan to so quadro on i understand but eventually for the hospitality business do we think that you want to at some stage monetize that portfolio i don't have a firm view on that uh mohit i think big picture again these hotels are great amenities stand alone these hotels now are doing great uh i mean they are giving they are almost reaching stabilized occupancy other than four seasons so honestly there's no reason for us to sell these assets but as we always say uh if if somebody is ready to offer 2x the price why not but that's just hypothetical okay and one clarification arvind on the uh, flex party said that uh, a lot of demand is coming from manyata so despite you increasing your share of flex the overall share of gcc as a percentage of your manyata tenants won't change meaningfully right it won't more uh, manyata is a 13 and a half million square feet park with another 3 and 1/2 million getting delivered in the next 3 years so what we've done is uh you know i think put together around 600000 so okay uh, great that's all from my side and uh, wish you all a very happy diwali in advance thank, thank you. you wish you the same thank you the next follow up question is from the line of ritesh sheet from access capital please go ahead yeah uh, just one question i had uh, on the pre commitments that uh, you know we have increased uh, in our leasing guidance uh, is that related to the upcoming development that we are delivering in manyata or or something uh, you know we look in chennai because that is also closer to delivery by probably next year in 6 and 1 months so just to comment on that for chennai it is actually for chennai okay so so a million square feet Uh, we are going to deliver there so 0.5 million square feet is what we are expecting to be released in next 6 months yeah right. okay okay thank you thank you thank you as there are no further questions on behalf of embassy day that concludes this conference thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your line